by six. Yep, we're going, pulling out all three, all three on them. Because potentially, he, she, it, or they are in this area. I clearly saw something out of the corner of my eyes here a few minutes ago while I was setting up, hence running back into the house for the camera. And to pinpoint where this movement was, it's right there. All right, so guys, here's what's going on. It's a beautiful Saturday morning, still summer, but there's no heat or humidity here today in central Virginia. So I decided I was gonna come out and saw up some of this huge firewood that was given to us by Fant Tree Services out of Madison uh, County, Culpeper. They service all of central Virginia, Charlottesville, Greene County, Orange. If you have trees you need taken down, or if you had trees fall in a storm that needs cut up, contact these guys. You can find them on the internet, great guys. And your wood might end up be, uh, heating my home here this winter or next winter. So I decided to come out, cut some of this up. We are very, very close to actually going out and getting a gasoline powered log splitter because this is just too much work for my, my, my manual splitter. It would just take forever. So, uh, and I, I'm probably going to be getting a new chainsaw too. I'm going to need something a little bit bigger, a little bit better because I've got a 18 inch pull and I'll be using today and they call them pull ons because they have a tendency to have to like be restarted because they die often and keep watching this area. So I'm just going to work for a bit and let you watch, but here's what's going on. And uh, if you've been following the channel for a long time, which most of you watching this have, you know, this has always been a high activity level, this wood pile, he, she, it, or they potentially have come in at times and they've knocked the wood piles over to let us know that they've been here. Um, I intentionally uh, hauled six truckloads of firewood to a different location on my property this summer to kind of test things out because I wanted to know if I could work somewhere else cutting firewood without having that feeling of being watched. And this is a crazy story. This is a this is one of those weird but true things, the kind of stuff you can't make up. Um, if I were try to, to try to describe the feeling that we so often get over here, whether it's in the garden or you know working on the firewood, this part of the property, as a writer, if I were writing you know this in a fictional book, it would be kind of like having almost as if somebody lived uh, close enough to you to where they could see you, maybe at that location. And maybe they were like agoraphobic or um, voyeuristic. Uh, maybe they only left their house once or twice a week to go get booze or whatever their, their thing was. And uh, they just spent large periods of their time throughout the day just kind of staying back about eight or ten feet away from the window so they can see out, but you can't see them. You sense that in your gut. That's the feeling we get here. And, you know, you turn so many times and just get a glimpse of somebody pulling back, you know, as if, oh, no, they see, they see that I'm watching. That's exactly what it feels like. And so, again, it's up here in this area, specifically right here, right there at the tree line. It's like just within the tree line. Okay, so this summer when I hauled that, that wood to the different location, it was away from here. Uh, there, there was no clear view from these places where I get this feeling. I was splitting wood and uh, with the manual splitter and the first couple days I just I never got the feeling and I'm like okay so what's going on well if there was anything in here uh, it within these tree lines they would have to come out and position themselves at a location where I would clearly be able to see them for them to be able to commit their voyeurism just wasn't happening well by the third day or the fourth day whichever it was splitting wood with my manual splitter um, I got it all split up, by the way, now, except for some pieces that need to be cut down with the saw, but there's not many. So I'm sitting there in a the chair, and I clearly get this feeling that I'm being watched. Because we, we, you know how that feels, right? We're not idiots. 
So I'm looking around back here and I'm seeing nothing, you know? But you remember the, the video that probably brought most of you here, the annoying neighbor with the crayon. Um, and this individual hasn't been a problem since we took care of that issue with crayon, but uh, his parents live across from us. And so I glance over, cause that's where he spends most of his time. He's like the world's oldest mama's boy, like 60 years old and always hanging out with mommy all day. I look over, dude is like in his field with binoculars, just like this, watching me split firewood. And I lean forward in, in my chair. I'm thinking, am I seeing what I'm seeing? And I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? Well, he obviously saw that. And so he's like this. Binoculars drop. He goes back in the house. So that lets me know when my spidey senses are telling me I'm being watched, I know I'm being watched. Uh, that time it wasn't from, you know, potentially a Bigfoot Sasquatch or maybe something else, you know, and, uh, or someone else. Um, but I had that same feeling and that's a feeling I get here very often. So when I got that today and I turned and I saw movement out of the corner of my eyes, I decided to come get this camera, set it up. We're going to record 10, 15, 20 minutes. I, I can't look back there if I'm focusing on cutting this wood. So I want you to look for me. That's what get my six means. We have a lot of newcomers always coming to the channel. They say, what's get my six mean? Okay. Let's say I'm facing the 12 o'clock on a, on a clock. Six is right here directly behind me. Okay. It's military terminology. By the way, I wanted to show you my new hat. I got this at a thrift store this week for $3 and it's Nike. Check out the back. Whoville, you know, the nickname of Charlottesville because of the who's UVA Cavaliers. All right. With no further ado, as my beautiful bride dearly, AKA Giggly Girl would say it, I'm going to get started. You get my six. And again, if I have to start this saw over and over, it's not because, well, I guess I suck. I, according to a lot of comments, I suck. But the saw kind of sucks too. Remember, eye pro, ear pro, got some brand new work gloves. I like to work with gloves because I do have writer's hands. Go buy my new book, October Nights, 31 Tales for the Halloween Season, now available in print and Kindle. And from the link in the description box of this video below, still the number one best-selling new horror anthology on Amazon, the print copy. Kindle's number two best-selling. So go check it out, read it. But that's why I wear gloves. And uh, but always make sure to replace your gloves frequently because bacteria does build up in them and it can get you sick. Always have water to stay hydrated. And also when you're doing this, I like to keep water in case you inhale some sawdust and start to choke.
So, I was out of view there for a bit, and it was kind of intentional. Oh. I wanted to see if there was something up in this area for it, or they, or he or she, to have seen me where I was doing that last cut there. They would have had to have come out. So I've got to go back and see if I captured it on camera. You probably already know because you just watched if you saw it time stamp it tell me what you believe it was um <clears throat> and in this pull and saws defense uh you heard it stop once down there that's because i got it pinched in a log and i had to pull it out and if you ever get your saw pinched you stop it and pull it out safely don't just try to rip at it because that thing comes out and it's still running you're going to get hurt so or you potentially possibly get hurt So the saw, I mean, this is my third year to have this one. I've had them in the past. I really haven't had any problems with them. I guess I talked a little, talked it down the road a little too much here at the beginning. But uh, as you can clearly see, that, that log over there is just too, too much for this thing. I mean, that thing's almost three feet in diameter. So I am just going to have to get a, a bigger, bigger uh, saw. So that's going to happen here in the, in the near future. So thanks for being here with me for another episode of the PBS. S, the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch show. <laughs>